period. Well, Chris, is a video. Now, this is the oldest method of removing corn from straw going back thousands of years. It's called the scutching block. Basically, the straw was beaten against um, wooden pins or steel pins. The uh, wonderful idea of this is that the straw was kept intact, which was ideal for Thatchers. It survived down through the years used by Thatchers. Flails were invented by the Chinese, mainly for threshing rice. They would have a basket-like uh, woven uh, f uh, mat, a bit like um, a basket, and the corn would be flailed on it. Usually seven or eight people would do that at the time. The corn went through the woven mat to a pit in the floor. The hand thresher was invented in 1784 by a man called Andrew Meekle in Scotland. They were hand cranked and pedal cranked. The one you're looking at at the moment was uh, manufactured by um, Shearer Brothers. Shearer Brothers were both apprentices to the said Andrew Meekle and so this machine would be in excess of 200 years old. You can see the rotary drum and the rotary drum was used for stripping the corn from the straw. Amazingly enough, the rotary drum would have survived all the ways up to the 1980s to the two New Holland combines we saw in the beginning. The grinding of corn for flour, two stones, one revolving on top of the other, the grain would be put in a hole in the middle and by rotary movement it was turned into flour which could be made into bread. This would be going back centuries, this method of grinding corn. And no doubt a slice of bread made of that with a bit of homemade butter would put hair on your chest. Once the hand threshing and pedal threshing was mastered, there was only one way it was going to go, and that's to get bigger. So there was a gear invented, rotated by horses, and we had the horse thresher. In the early 1900s, you could have bought this unit for £24.10. shillings. The horses walked in a circular motion that in turn would have turned the gear. The speed of the gear of course was increased as it reached the drum, the threshing drum. sheep was always fed into the drum head first, so the grain would get stripped off first. Normally this would be turned by a pair of uh, four horses, a pair either side. For the second half of the day, the drum would be turned around and driven from the other side, so the horses would have walked in the opposite direction, and it kept their heads straight.
this of course was a great attraction on the day as people always like to see the ability of an animal. This drum would be rotating at about maybe eight or nine hundred revs, having been geared up maybe something like a hundred and twenty or a hundred and thirty to one from the rotation of the horses right up to the small gear on the drum. The next step along a course from the um, horse thresher was the stationery. Now engines were becoming popular from 1910-1915 onwards. And of course, stepping up in size again, they went to the stationary thresher. This was able to uh, thresh and winnow the oats at the same time, so the cotton came out clean. Any machine used before this was threshed and the cotton had to later be cleaned. Similar to the horse treasure, it was fed into the drum head first. And towards the bottom, you'll see the rocking backwards and forwards. That's the shaker uh, shaking the oats. And there's a little blower in front of it, and it's blowing away any rubbish, like yawns or whatever that might be in the oats. And the straw walkers. Um, and in this machine it was the first instance of putting the grain directly into a sack. Uh, this engine was made in 1918. The make is a is a, an Eagle engine made in the town of Warwick outside Birmingham and it was marketed under the trade name of a Warwick Eagle. It's a Kerry engine and a farmer in North Kerry ordered it off McCowns in October 1918 and it came into the port of Feenet in January 1919. They are to offload it from the ship and put into a lighter or, or a, a barge, if you like, and it came up Tralee Bay and up the up the canal, the Brindleville Canal, and up to the basin, where it was offloaded by a steam crane and put into a horse and dray and taken out to the farm in the parish of Abbey Dorney, uh, where it remained until I purchased it in 1978. And uh, I didn't have a lot of work to do to it. And uh, uh, to describe it, 
it's a horizontal open crank four stroke uh, petrol paraffin engine. We started in petrol and switched it over to paraffin and uh, it is fitted with an atmospheric or a, an automatic inlet valve. Uh, it is highly unusual for the time in that the engine is different to most engines of that period uh, because all the engine is basically one casting. That means uh, the, the base and the crank bed and the, the, the water hopper and the, 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 the block carrying the, the, the piston liner is all one casting. Quite unusual for the time. And it's fitted with a trip magneto. The magneto does not rotate uh, at all, it's just, it just flicks. It's a flick magneto. And it's fitted with a centrifugal governor, which operates on the principle of centrifugal force, which pull it when the engine is running and comes under load. Uh, a sleeve moves out along the crankshaft and pulls a pawl, which ho the, holds the uh, exhaust valve open. Uh, the engine is water-cooled, and it starts and runs quite easy. Uh, there are only five surviving examples in the world, one here in Ireland in County Kerry, and uh, there are two in the UK and two in New Zealand. Uh, a very rare engine, and uh, it's working all day driving the barn trasher here. So anyway, I consider fortunate myself to own such a rare engine, a rare example. Over. Period. Well, great.